Hi everyone, so this is a step one review for immunology concepts. These are high yield clinical presentations that I got from UWorld and also First Aid. Um, so initially what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a clinical presentation. I'm going to pause for a little bit and then I'm going to show you the answers and tell you some high yield points about each disease. Okay, so let's just start. So the first one are transfusion reactions. Um, this is someone who presents minutes after transfusion. They present with shortness of breath, hypotension, tachycardia, and wheezing. This is going to be anaphylactic shock. Uh, initially, if the treatment for anaphylactic shock is epinephrine. The next one is someone who presents minutes after transfusion. They have dark urine and they have back pain. This is acute hemolytic reaction. Uh, again, hemolysis will lead to the buildup of bilirubin. Bilirubin in the urine can turn can make it dark. Back pain can also be called flank pain, so you have to watch out for that as well. Uh, the next one is symptoms a few weeks after transfusion. Um, the person has a low hemoglobin. They have a elevated indirect bilirubin and a elevated reticulocyte count. This is delayed hemolytic reaction. Again, um, in any kind of hemolytic reaction, you have to watch out for this elevated, indirect, or unconjugated bilirubin. Uh, they also have high LDH. They also present with low haptoglobin. And because the bone marrow is trying to replace the cells that are lost, you have a high reticulocyte count. The next one is someone who presents with a fever after transfusion. This is febrile non-hemolytic reaction. The next one is tingling and hypocalcemia after transfusion. Again, this is due to calcium chelation. This is citrate buildup. So a lot of blood products, they contain citrate. Uh, citrate, what it can do is it can bind to calcium and lead to hypocalcemia. And again, they present with numbness and tingling as a result. This is someone who shows up with shortness of breath, low blood pressure, high respiratory rate after a transfusion. This is trally or transfusion associated lung injury. This is always tested uh, against the next one, which is someone who presents with shortness of breath, high blood pressure after a transfusion. This is TACO, or Transfusion Associated Circulatory Overload. So the key difference between these two is that TACO is a circulatory overload or a volume overload, and that's why they present with high blood pressure, whereas TRALI is a respiratory problem, and it's a buildup of fluid inside the lungs, so they present with more uh, with a higher respiratory rate. The next ones are immunodeficiencies. Uh, the first one is a recurrent sinopulmonary infection low IgG, IgM, IgA, and IgEs, and a low B cell count. This is X-linked A gamma globinemia, also called Bruton's gamma globinemia. Again, the next, it's always tested along with the next one, which presents the recurrent sinopulmonary infections, low immunoglobulins, but a normal B cell count. This is common variable immunodeficiency. So you have to watch out between the B cell count. So both of them have low immunoglobulins, but the normal B cell count is for the common variable immunodeficiency. The next one is recurrent infections, a high IgM and low IgG and IgAs. This is hyper IgM syndrome. The next one is someone who presents with asthma, allergies, and anaphylaxis after a blood transfusion. This is selective IgA deficiency. So the reason these people present with anaphylaxis after a blood transfusion is because you have they've never experienced any kind of IgA and IgA is present in a lot of blood products which can lead to anaphylaxis. The next one is someone who presents with eczema, it's usually a little boy, and they have a low platelet count. This is Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. The next one is a little baby, seven months old, with frequent infections, a low IgG, but a normal IgA and IgM. This is transient hypogammaglobinemia of infancy. 
the key for this question is that there is a it's a seven month old baby so if you remember um the mother will supply the majority of the igg for the baby for the first six months so after seven at the seven month point they no longer have any igg of their own the next one is someone who presents with recurrent skin infections catalase positive organisms like staph aureus serratia nocardia aspergillus bulkadiria, also a abnormal dihydroamine test, and a abnormal NBT test. This is CGD or chronic granulomatous disease. Um, this is a NADPH oxidase deficiency where you have an inability to, to generate reactive oxygen species to kill off these catalase positive bacteria. The next one is someone who presents with recurrent non purulent cellulitis delayed separation of the umbilical cord. This is leukocyte adhesion deficiency. This is a CD18 deficiency, uh, which leads to an inability of immune cells to migrate to sites of infection. So very commonly in questions, they can present with elevated leukocyte count and it's non-purulent because none of those immune cells are getting to a site of infection. The next ones are these transplant reactions. So the first one is minutes after a transplant. This person presents with fibrinoid necrosis and thrombosis. This is hyperacute rejection. The next one is weeks to months, usually less than three months after transplant with leukocyte infiltration. This is the acute rejection. The next one is years after transplant. This person presents with fibrosis, atrophy, or ablative thick vessels. Chronic rejection. Finally, there is someone who receives a bone marrow transplant, now has diarrhea and a rash. This is graft versus host disease. Again, in this condition, you have CD8 lymphocytes from the, from the donor that are going to attack the host, leading to these signs and symptoms. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, you can contact us at medstudentsuccess at gmail.com. Um, we also have more step resources on our website. Um, see you soon.